One of the most powerful automation actions inside of Airtable is the find records action, but it can get a little bit confusing if you're trying to find records by another linked record. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we're an Airtable implementation partner. So let's use an example of project management and we have a table for projects and we have a table for tasks. In our projects, we just have a name of the project, a status, and then we're linking to our tasks. And in the tasks, we see the inverse. We also have a status, we've got a name for our task. And if we edit that link to the project, we can only link to a single project. So it's a many to one relationship. We have many tasks linked to one project at a time. Now, in this case, we want to say, hey, if our project is done, if we've completed a project, then we want to find all of the linked tasks and either close those tasks or we want to delete the tasks. We want to have some kind of follow-up behavior for all of the tasks for that project, which leads us to our automation that we're building. So we're starting with a trigger of when a record matches conditions and we're running it on our projects table. We're saying when the status of that project is done, we can test that out and we can choose our record and see we have a client onboarding project, which is listed as done. And the next step we wanna do is to be able to find those records. So we'll use a find records action, and we're gonna run this on the tasks table because we want to find the related tasks to that project. So we'll use a condition as opposed to a view. And you would think in this case, since we want to find the tasks by their linked project, that we would start off and we would say, hey, when the project, and let's say we do has any of, and we know we want this to be a dynamic value, because we're basing it off of that triggering project. So you'd think we would say dynamic and then plug in the Airtable record ID, which is that unique value for that project. But we get that message of invalid value. If we hover over, it says, when a record matches conditions cannot be converted to an array of string. So in this case, the linked project, even though it's a one-to-many relationship, it treats it as an array, a list of these objects, and so it's not liking the fact that we have this single object, this single string here. So let's try a different operator. Let's say project has any of, let's change that to contains. And now let's select our record ID. And it's not yelling at us. Let's test that action. And it doesn't find any records for us. So this isn't working because it's really treating this like the primary field. And the primary field doesn't contain that long string of random numbers and characters there. So that's not going to work. So then maybe we try something else. Maybe we say where the project, and let's get rid of this for a second. Let's say the project is the name of the project, the primary field, a contains. Okay, well, let's test this action. Great, it seems to work. It pulls back records, but wait a second. You can see that it also finds client onboarding too, as well as client onboarding. And that's because it contains is just searching for that subset of a string to see if a project matches that. It doesn't know it's the exact project. So this is what a lot of people do as kind of a workaround, but this isn't the greatest solution. You can do things like be able to enforce the uniqueness of the name, but I'd still rather use something more concrete like that unique identifier, that record identifier. So in order to do this, we're going to use a foolproof method of making sure that we find that right record ID every single time. Let's head back into our data. We'll turn that on later. And I'm just going to reveal my record ID field here. So this is a formula. I've added a new field. So you can choose a field of formula type. And we have an option just to plug in record underscore ID, which then provides us with that unique identifier for that record. That record identifier is so unique, no other record is going to match that. So this is the best way to check against it. Okay, so we've got a record identifier here that should just take a couple clicks of a button. Now on the task side, we want to be able to compare, does this project's record ID match the record ID over here? That's how we want to be able to find those related records. So on our tasks side, what we're going to do is, we're actually going to show that linked project ID. And in this case, instead of using a formula field and being able to show the task record ID, we don't really care about the task record ID in this case. What we want to be able to do is a lookup is kind of that portal or view into data from our related record. 
So what I'm saying for this is let's add a lookup. So this is a field type lookup and it's coming from our linked project. And now we want to show that formula field that we just created over on the projects. So this is going to show the projects record ID. And therefore we're going to call this project ID because it's not the ID of the task, it's the ID of the project. You'll notice that because we have multiple tasks that are linked to that client onboarding, they all are showing the same project ID. Now we have a way that we can find records by which one matches this record ID of that project. So let's head back into our automations here and we'll come down. And so instead of saying where the project equals this or that, now we're going to use that lookup field. So where the lookup field project ID, and we can do contains in this case, and we'll insert a dynamic value. And this is where we're going to select that record ID of the project. So we can say, if the record ID of the project is contained by the project ID of the lookup, then there's a match. Let's go ahead and test this out. And now we can see it finds only those three tasks as opposed to the fourth where it had client onboarding too, because it's actually looking for that project ID. Now this works well and good when we have a one to many relationship, one project to many tasks. But what would we do if we had a many to many relationship? Let's use a different example where we say we have projects and we have contacts and we could have multiple contacts assigned to a project, but each contact could also have multiple projects that they're working on. This is a pretty realistic use case. So we've got a linked relationship between projects and we have a table for contacts. And now this relationship, if we edit that, you can see that we allow linking to multiple records both ways. So we've got multiple contacts and multiple projects, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So if we head over to contacts, notice that on our projects, we already have that record ID field, so we don't have to add a new field. And on our contacts now, if we were to do the same thing that we did on our tasks, where we have that lookup, let's look at our lookup here, we're saying pull from the projects and pull from the record ID. So this is exactly the same thing that we did for tasks, but notice the difference in terms of how it appears. We've got a record ID, comma, another record ID. So it's treating it as a list separated by a comma, and that's just how lookups work inside of Airtable. So what we can do is if we come into our automations, and I've got a different automation here, same exact principle when the project is marked as done. So let's choose that record, okay? And then we've got our find records. And now we're going to do honestly exactly the same thing, but I just wanna explain why this works because we've got our project IDs lookup and contains is just looking at all of this as one long string. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this if we were doing something besides record IDs, but when you have record ID comma, another record ID, that's really unique. Like the chances of that data having this exact combination of characters, that's not gonna happen by random chance. So back in the automation here, when we find that record, we can say, hey, this could contain five different record IDs here of projects, but as long as it contains that record ID of the triggering one, somewhere in that list, we're good to go. So let's test this action here. And we can see that that triggering project found both Elon Musk and Sarah Blakely, even though they're each connected to their own projects and everything else, because they happen to be connected to that project, now we are able to find that ID in that list of project IDs. So I hope this helps you out as you're looking to find records by a linked records record ID. Now I know this can be a little bit complex at times. If you have any questions about your Airtable setup, feel free to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.